Hi everyone, it's Dr. Steph and I am here today to uh, talk about something that is extremely upsetting um, but that all of us need to be aware of and need to um, be educated on so that we can take the best care of ourselves and our family. Um, this article I just read this morning, uh, the title is The FDA finds glyphosate weed killer residues in nearly all grocery foods, grocery store foods, but has spent years hiding test results from the public. I'm going to scroll down here and just read excerpts from this article um, and then talk to you about what glyphosate is, what um, health issues glyphosate has in the research been tied to and there are innumerable health issues um, linked to glyphosates and then of course I'm not going to just give you bad news without giving you um, things that you can do to implement today um, to either avoid glyphosates or at least help your body detoxify them. We are living in such a toxic world right now that we are almost needing to be in a constant state of vigilance and detoxification or at least taking detox support um, in order to help flush these things out of the system. Um, so this is the article. Uh, like I said, FDA finds glyphosate weed killer residues in nearly all grocery foods, but has spent years hiding test results from the public. Now the FDA is supposed to represent us, the public. This is what I find absolutely infuriating that they are running tests and not publicizing the results because they just feel that we don't need to be alarmed or worried unnecessarily. How about just publish the test results and let us decide for ourselves? It's so patronizing and condescending. So um, two decades between 1994 and 2014 saw global glyphosate use boom from just over 56 million kilograms um, about 123 million pounds to around 826 million kilograms or over 200 million pounds per year just in the states alone. Um, most of the farm uh, products that are being sprayed with glyphosate, which is um, basically an herbicide made by Monsanto, um, it's also uh, sold generally speaking at any hardware store or garden center as Roundup or Roundup Ready. So I'm sure you've used this um, as a weed killer, um, even at your own house. Um, but it's basically most grain products that are sprayed with this, um, either before or, or near the end of harvest season. And so uh, wheat, oat, corn, soy, we're also looking at canola, some spinach and almond farmers also spray it um, before the growing season. So here's the deal. Whether it's sprayed on the plant or not is completely inconsequential. If it's sprayed on the soil, it gets into the plant via the root. And so um, this is a problem as well. It's not just what's on the plant, but also what's in the soil. A Freedom of Information Act request by The Guardian newspaper has uncovered documents confirming that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, has quietly been testing food samples to check for glyphosate residue, but has not released its findings to the public. The Guardian notes that the agency has struggled to find any foods that have not been contaminated by this herbicide. In an email to some of his colleagues, FDA chemist Richard Thompson noted, I have brought wheat crackers, granola cereal, and cornmeal from home to test, and there's a fair amount in all of them. He noted that the only food he had on hand that was not found to contain glyphosate traces was broccoli. <laughs> this is crazy. Even though the documents reveal that some of the foods tested contained 6.5 parts per million of glyphosate, well above the legal limit of five parts per million, the FDA insists that these results don't count since the foods used in the tests were not official samples. No, they weren't official samples. They were literally foods that had been bought off a grocery store shelf and brought from a, the FDA staff member's home. So these are in circulation, everyday foods, 
And these are not considered official because it wasn't under controlled research or maybe it wasn't um, provided by a food company in a clean format for false testing or something. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and so what I want to talk about is what glyphosate really is. And there's a good link here to just explain what glyphosate is because it's important to know what this, what this stuff is that we're even talking about. Glyphosate is also known chemically as, as a N-phosphonomal methyl glycine. It's a broad spectrum systemic pesticide and herbicide and crop desiccant. So basically, um, essentially it's used to burn crops to the ground. And so th this is a great way to just get a crop dead so that it can be turned over for a quick turnover for uh, the next year's crops. Um, but also note that along with glyphosate from Monsanto, which is in this form here called Roundup, and you guys have heard of this term before, the company Monsanto has created this chemical, which is essentially an Agent Orange derivative, the same Agent Orange that was used in Vietnam as a crop desiccant to burn plants to the ground and clear the jungle. This is what's being used in our agricultural system here in the United States. But here's the thing, Monsanto has also now genetically modified certain seeds and plants in order to withstand the spraying of these chemicals. And so they can essentially use these chemicals um, to get um, all the weeds around the crop killed, basically burned to the ground, while the genetically modified plant, which is supposedly something we're going to eat, um, remains. And so, so this is the, the issue with genetically modified organisms. Um, and again, the most commonly genetically modified plants for agricultural purposes, wheat, soy, corn, something like 96% of corn and soy is genetically modified, canola, which is very, very toxic for you. Um, and now we're even finding that non-GMO crops like strawberries, um, spinach, almonds, the ground may be sprayed prior to in order to clear the ground of any weeds. Um, in prior to um, uh, installing the crop. So we get exposed to this stuff. Here's the problem. This is, is a chemical that contains glycine. Glycine is an amino acid that our bodies and all life forms contain in massive amounts. It's one of the smallest amino acids or proteins that is in our body, and it is an exceptionally important uh, amino acid for so many structures and so many functions in the body that what happens is when we consume this, it literally gets in and it replaces our own normal glycine. And so it starts to affect all body processes. And this is why it is being linked to so many different uh, disease processes. So I want to show you, this is a research uh, paper that was published and you can see here, I'm going to scroll up so you can see it. Glycine, the smallest amino acid, has unique properties that support flexibility and the ability to anchor the plasma membrane or cytoskeleton. This is of our cells. Glyphosate substitution for glycines can easily explain a link with diabetes, obesity, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD, pulmonary edema, adrenal gland insufficiency, hypothyroidism, Alzheimer's disease, ALS, Parkinson's disease, prion disease, lupus, mitochondrial disease, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, neural tube defects, infertility, hypertension, glaucoma, osteoporosis, fatty liver disease, and kidney failure. And they, the FDA does not think it's important for us to know that essentially almost every single grocery store shelf product that is manufactured with genetically modified food or ingredients has uh, up to the limit of what is safe of glyphosate in this product. This is from an article. This is an article from EcoWatch, another website. Again, linking uh, Monsanto's Roundup, glyphosate products, herbicides, 
to 15 different health problems. And they literally just go through and list them all here. It's a lot of neurological stuff. It's a lot of metabolic stuff. Basically your diabetes, your obesity, your cancer, and your neurological things like Alzheimer's disease, ADHD, um, autism. There's a huge correlation now between glyphosate and autism. Essentially what it does is it causes um, the replacement of glycine in the brain and nervous tissue with this glyphosate and it creates a buildup of something called glutamate, which is a very inflammatory, excitatory neurochemical. It causes a lot of issues. Um, so we're finding autism, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, um, ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease, ADHD, depression, brain cancer, breast cancer, cancers in general, um, celiac disease and gluten intolerance, this is a very, very serious issue in this country, more so than almost any other country. Celiac disease is a very severe gluten intolerance, and there is a link now to glyphosate being a major disruptor of the gut lining um, and the good bacteria in the system leading to things like celiac, chronic disease, uh, kidney disease, colitis, which again is the inflammation of the intestines, depression, diabetes, heart disease, hypothyroidism, IBS or leaky gut syndrome, liver disease, multiple sclerosis, lymphoma, Parkinson's, um, infertility, miscarriages and stillbirths. Glyphosate is also um, one of the, one of the uh, purposes of it is to, again, they, they genetically modify the organism in order to withstand the chemicals, but it also creates infertile plants, meaning that you're forced now to buy from Monsanto every single year new crop seeds. You cannot, farmers in this country that are using these products can no longer maintain and keep and clean their own seeds for reuse the next year. They're forced to literally buy the seeds from Monsanto every year. What's happening is if we're rendering the plants infertile with these glycine disruptors, these chemicals, what do we think we're doing to us? We have a, an issue with infertility in the human population. This is essentially gonna potentially you know, speak to the, the demise of our own species. Um, linked to obesity, reproductive problems, respiratory illnesses. And I am seeing more and more patients coming in with COPD and asthma and other respiratory issues bizarre pneumonias and lung vasculitis and issues like that. And so, um, and I have worked with patients that grew up on a farm near um, a company that makes these chemicals. And lo and behold, they end up with type one diabetes or rheumatoid arthritis as young children. And so we're looking at autoimmune issues as well. Um, and so uh, more research is published uh, every single day on um, the different pathways that are causing um, the diseases as far as glyphosate is concerned. So this research article talks about uh, celiac and gluten intolerance caused by glyphosate. And these are published on PubMed, which is the, the National Institute of Health's um, research site. So you can see for yourself, literally, um, that research is out there showing glyphosate pathways um, causing neurological diseases. And so you can see here, they've been associated with, um, in the research, um, autism, Alzheimer's disease, depression, anxiety syndrome, Parkinson's disease, prion disease, glutamate overexpression in the brain has been associated with these issues. Also, um, osteoporosis and osteomalacia due to the disruption in the good bacteria causing mineral absorption deficiencies, but also glyphosate itself is a chelator of minerals. And so what that means is the glyphosate that you're eating will bind the minerals in your food. And so they will leave through your bowel movement and they will not absorb into the system. So we're talking about bone demineralization, dental issues as far as maintaining good healthy teeth, glyphosate, uh, this research paper talking about the pathways of glyphosate causing cancer. It's the fact that our FDA, our government, knows that most of the foods on the grocery store shelves contain um, significant amounts of glyphosate and are not disclosing this and telling us what, what does this mean? Um, these are, this is an article that talks about the most common crops, the, the eight main crops that are genetically modified. 
uh, corn, soybean, canola, cotton seed, sugar beets, which is where most of the sugar uh, glucose comes um, with regards to foods and between corn, you know, high fructose corn syrup and sugar beets, that's where most of our foods are sweetened. Most Hawaiian papaya is genetically modified. Uh, some zucchini and yellow squash, genetically modified. Um, of course, the sugar that's coming from the sugar beets and dairy, um, especially if it's being fed or consuming GMO food or GMO grains and crops. Um, and they've, they've got amazing graphs online that you can even look up that look at different cancers, different diseases like autism, diabetes, um, cancer, and, and its relation to the graph of the increase in these genetically modified corn, soy, cotton uh, type of crops. So we're seeing since the mid 90s exponential increases in chronic diseases, metabolic, neurological, cancer, obesity, all kinds of issues. And it's correlating very dramatically, not just with the increase in sugar in our food, but also uh, glyphosates, these chemicals, and genetically modified uh, crops. And so what do we do? First of all, um, there's, I'm going to go over some supplements, some foods, some things that you can do as far as how to buy foods and what to buy and what not to buy so that you can A, avoid the glyphosates as much as you possibly can, but also that you can detoxify them and try to eliminate them out of the body. It's challenging because these things bind literally into your tissues. And so you, you're, we're gonna have to be very diligent about maintaining cer certain supplements in the diet on a day-to-day -day basis um, to help with, as tissues turn over, uh, basically getting healthy tissues back. But um, so frustrating. Okay, so there's a lab that we use called Great, Great Paint Plains Laboratory. Some of you guys are familiar with some testing that we do through urine, organic acid testing, um, uh, mycotox testing, so uh, looking for mold toxins in the system. So it's a, it's a test we run out of our lab. Um, it, this is also a simple test that we can use to determine if you have high amounts of glyphosates in your urine, which would tell us um, that you're flushing them out from the system. Um, so there's a, a, a test that we can do in our office to actually test for this. As far as saving time and money, I would actually recommend that you do three to, to six months of diligent avoidance um, of glyphosate containing foods. I'm gonna go over the list in a moment, as well as periodic liver detoxification protocols, which I'm gonna review in a moment, um, and ongoing supplemental support for day-to-day -day detoxification of, of glyphosate and other toxins. I would probably do that for three to six months. And then if you're curious to see how you're doing, then do the glyphosate test just to see if there's some additional things that you might want to um, implement. Some people will do glyphosate tests before and after. This is something I did. And after 30 days of intensive detoxification um, through protocols I'm gonna talk about, I was actually able to get this flushed out of my system pretty significantly. So let's go through, um, I put together this, this, uh, this list basically of the things that you can do to um, start to avoid and detoxify glyphosate from the body. We're gonna just have to take this into our own hands because the government is not really gonna help us with this. As far as food goes, number one, you really, really want to be diligent about only eating non-GMO organic food. This is food that the soil should not even be sprayed with uh, uh, glyphosate. The, the soil itself has to be clean. Um, I will warn you that even um, wine in California from biodynamic organic vineyards is also showing up with glyphosate residue when tested. Um, because the water itself now is containing glyphosate from runoff. So even organic farms are susceptible to exposure to these glyphosate chemicals. But wherever possible, non-GMO and organic. Also, um, only meat and poultry fed non-GMO. This stuff gets into the animal, the livestock itself, glyphosate, 
and takes over the animal's glycine. So essentially you're eating glyphosate that is embedded in the animal's flesh. Very, very important that when you're buying your meat and poultry, you're getting non-GMO. You guys know that I recommend, um, you know, if you're buying from Whole Foods or Moms or some of the organic markets, make sure that it's grass-fed, grass-finished, because if it's grain-fed, it's probably gonna be grain-fed with things like corn that contain glyphosates in addition to too much sugar. Eat Dr. Steph's plate rule. Um, that's my general rule. Uh, most of you guys that are patients uh, already have this information. It's in our book as well. Uh, both of our books, the Gluten Book and Diabetes, Defeat Diabetes Book, have instructions for how to structure your plate um, to get, uh, to be able to eat essentially grain free um, and bean free if needed, but for sure soy free. So if you're eating grain free, then you don't really have to worry too much about wheat and, and oat and um, corn and does it contain glyphosates or not because most of it does at this point. So following the plate rule and generally sticking to a grain free diet will help eliminate a lot of that um, exposure to chemicals. Eating sulfur containing foods. This is because the sulfur in these foods contributes to the manufacturing in your body of things, antioxidants like uh, glutathione. Glutathione is one of the best detoxifiers of glyphosate. Um, it is a supplement I'm gonna talk about uh, later, but eating foods that are high in sulfur containing foods can also help day to day. So broccoli and broccoli sprouts, um, we steam broccoli almost every day, every other day. I save the stalks for shakes. We buy broccoli sprouts, throw them into our shakes and our salads, put them in our vegetable lettuce wraps. Um, but wherever you can cram yourself full of these foods, um, and remember from that article on the, that the FDA uh, staff member uh, essentially said that the only food that he had in his house that happened to be free of glyphosate when tested was broccoli. So if you're buying organic non-GMO broccoli, you're gonna be getting a very clean uh, food that is high in this ability to detoxify. Other cruciferous vegetables, so that's most of your greens, you know, your kale, Swiss chard, um, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, those are also important, and garlic. So um, unless you have an allergy or an intolerance to garlic, try to get fresh garlic in um, your food as much as possible. Uh, as far as supplements go, there are certain things that help bind toxins and eliminate them from the system. One is a supplement that we have called humic acid, um, and it's very easy to take. You can just take one or two of these in the morning or at night on empty stomach, um, and that is uh, has got some very good properties as far as um, uh, binding toxins, but also killing bacteria, yeast, and, and um, viruses. So it's a pretty potent um, supplement. Activated charcoal or bentonite clay. This one you won't find on our store, GI Detox, um, on the internet, but you will be able to call the office and order this um, directly from us. Um, I don't recommend that you take something like activated charcoal or bentonite clay every single day. Um, because this will bind not only toxins, but it binds uh, minerals as well. So here's how this is going to work. If you've eaten something that's high in glyphosate and it's been it's binding it um, up your minerals, the GI detox will take all of that and dump it out the system. So you'll still be dealing with potential mineral deficiencies. And I have seen patients that um, did not cycle on and off of this properly, took it daily for months and months and months. And when we do blood work and testing, we find that they're iron deficient, they're calcium deficient, they're, they're magnesium deficient. You don't want to get deficient in your minerals when you're using some of these chelators uh, that bind the toxins like glyphosate and pull them out of the body. But um, every few weeks or monthly, taking GI detox between meals, a, a couple few capsules, um, for maybe three to five days is not a bad thing to do. If you're doing things like lemonade fasting or detoxifying or intermittent fasting, again, during that detox time, that's a good time to take GI detox for that period of time specifically. Afterwards, you definitely need to bring extra minerals back in. Um, and I'll talk about that in a moment. 
probiotics and prebiotics. So glyphosates wreak havoc on your good bacteria. They are actually patented as an antibiotic. So essentially our, our general food system now has become an antibiotic to our system. Um, and once that happens, we end up with leaky gut, all kinds of neurological issues, um, absorption issues. So we've got several different probiotics. We have ProBio 30, which is a nice daily general 30 billion per capsule probiotic. We have ProBiotic 100, which is getting up into a higher range. And we have a powdered product, ProBio 350. And this is what I recommend um, people take if they've actually had to take a, uh, an antibiotic for a period of time in order to replenish um, their good bacteria. Um, another thing that we recommend is prebiotics. These are fibers um, and foods that specifically feed and nourish those good bacteria in the gut. Um, and I did a video not too long ago on inulin, which is a fiber-based sugar-free sweetener that is exceptionally good for the good bacteria and has again been shown to reduce um, the factors for metabolic disease, obesity, diabetes, uh, bone demineralization. So this is a very helpful thing that you should do every day. I do a couple teaspoons of this uh, powder in my shake, in my drinks, in my electrolyte drinks um, throughout the day. It's pretty easy to get in and it's going to feed the good guys. Um, every once in a while, it's a good idea to just do a detox, whether it's once a quarter, every three months for a few weeks, like our paleo detox, which is a 21 day detox. Some of our patients prefer to do this one week per month. And they just generally kind of maintain themselves that way. That's perfectly fine. Um, in the detox kit, you've got your detox shake, which is the meal replacement. You've got your detox liver capsules. They can be taken in addition to your current supplements, or you can take a break from your supplements if you're going off things for a week while you're doing this. Um, and there's a very easy to follow booklet inside. And this is a very effective way to help the liver um, and the system flush out and detoxify toxins like glyphosates. Um, Hepatobalance is also, um, let's say you're just doing the, your own meal shake that you get from us and you, you want to just kind of keep that the same. You don't want to change anything. Once in a while, you can go through these packets um, of Hepatobalance liver support. And there's very good amounts of things like glutathione and milk thistle and the liver um, herbs like dandelion extract, which have been shown and verified in research to help um, bind and remove glyphosate from the system. So these are things that you can do once in a while. With Hepatobalance, I wouldn't change anything else that you're doing other than maybe do two packets of the Hepatobalance for breakfast and dinner. Once the canister's gone, then you just, you're done with it for a little while. These aren't necessarily things that you should be taking every single day as far as intense detoxification support. This one, though, I would take every single day for the rest of your life. Um, glutathione is the antioxidant. It's a sulfur-based um, item that, again, is very important. The liver uses this to help eliminate toxins from the system. And this will keep your detoxific detoxification pathways clear and open and functioning. This is helpful to help prevent cancer, um, partly because of the help uh, of the removal of toxins and free radicals from the system. Um, we have a glutathione in a pump form. It's, it's in a form that is very easily absorbed in through the cheek. So four pumps per day for a daily maintenance is fine. Um, if you're really going through something or you want to do more of a detoxification, then I would do four pumps twice a day. You let it sit in the mouth before you eat. Let it sit in the mouth for a minute or so. It, it will absorb literally in um, almost at 100% rate through the cheek. Um, it is going to be the highest absorption that we have for glutathione. We do have it in capsule form, so if this is not viable for you, then I can do, I would do it in the caps um, the, the capsule form. But liquid, liquid, liquid is always better, um, and the sublinguals and and the ones that absorb in through the cheek are really, really, really um, effective at getting into the system as far as absorption. Uh, again, this is on our online store, uh, my living health uh, livinghealthmarket.com. Uh, that's livinghealthmarket.com. You can find a lot of our, um, our own labeled uh, supplements there. And then this is what I recommend for replenishing minerals. So if you are doing GI detox, the charcoal, um, or if you're doing our humic acid um, and you're kind of doing a, a round of that for a few days, afterwards you want to bring in the minerals to replenish um, your mineralization. 
Another great thing to do um, is a sauna. So if you guys are working out at a club that has, or a gym that has a sauna that you're able to do, um, if you can get in there, I mean, at least once a week for an hour and just kind of sweat out the toxins, it, sauna has been shown to be effective at helping lower blood pressure, but it's also a very helpful um, uh, mode of detoxification. In an ideal world, you'd actually have a sauna in your house. Um, you want a thermal sauna, one that would actually allow you to, to sweat, like a steam type sauna. You can get combo saunas that have infrared. Um, and uh, another important thing is you don't have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on a sauna to get the benefit. Literally, you can just go on Amazon and buy these infrared, um, uh, like little, they're almost like sleeping bags in a way. And um, let me just show you right here. Okay, so if we go on to Amazon and we do infrared, and if you don't wanna buy anything from Amazon, that's fine. Just go ahead and do an internet search. But you can see there's portable saunas. So obviously you're, you can get these big saunas if you have room, but you can get these little tiny saunas that you can sit, um, watch TV in, read, whatever. Um, and so you can do this daily for half an hour to an hour and sweat out the toxins. This will help you get rid of the toxins like glyphosate. So this is where we're at right now. Um, this is an absolute must. Uh, only organic food, supplement with glutathione and some of the other things I talked about um, in order to uh, try to eliminate glyphosate from the system and prevent it from getting in. I hope that you guys felt this was helpful. Um, please leave comments below if there's other topics you want me to talk about. I just felt compelled to get into this today because we have a government that is not taking care of us, um, that is not disclosing important information that I think people should have so that they can make the best choices day to day um, to stay healthy and stay alive.